Welcome back to the channel, my name is Jack, and today we're gonna to have a look at every moment lens on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. My moment case is finally here, so I've finally been able to properly test out all of these lenses. And I do have some things about compatibility to say, so for anyone who's still waiting for your case to arrive, or if you're thinking of buying one for moment lenses you already own, or if you're someone who's been looking to pick up some lenses like these for your 14 Pro, I think you should watch this video before you buy. But just quickly, starting with the case first, I do love Moments cases. This year they come in four colours for the 14s. Black, blue, a really nice red clay, and this olive green that I have here. It's got a very autumnal, natural feel to it. I love these cases for two reasons. Firstly, they support MagSafe, so I can use it with all of my MagSafe accessories, my MagSafe battery packs, MagSafe mounts, and my MagSafe chargers. It has a ring of pretty strong magnets in the back, just like the last few iPhones. And secondly, they have these two loop points on the bottom to attach a wrist strap to. So I don't have to worry about accidentally dropping my phone when I'm out shooting because I'm clumsy, but the wrist strap will catch it. Not a lot of cases have these, and I think that it's a really underrated feature. So I love it when a case has one. The case covers all of the buttons. It has a nice feel in the hand, and it's just a good solid case all around. But the main reason I'd say people get a Moment case is to use Moment's mobile lenses with the drop-in lens mount. These are Moments V2 lenses. I've had some of these since around 2018 when I first got some to use with my iPhone 10. And when I first started this channel, I made a few videos showing how they worked on my 12 Pro Max. Fast forward to now, I now have a 14 Pro Max and I've been testing these out and it's not looking good, unfortunately. There's some very noticeable vignetting at the edges of the frame on a few of these lenses. That's the dark corners you're seeing in a few of these shots. It's worse on some lenses than others. Plus I've noticed some sort of hazing and halation going on around the edges of some things in the shots I've taken. There are really only two lenses that still work as intended on the 14 Pros, so I'll show you how each one of them looks. When Moment first started making lenses like the wide, the tele, the macro, phones didn't have those dedicated extra cameras with those built-in focal lengths or features. So having these lenses meant that you could get an ultra wide shot or have an optical tele, or just shoot something really up close. But then as phones got those extra cameras, those cameras were never quite as good as the main camera. So still having these lenses meant that you could get a better quality wide or tele shot by mounting them on the main camera. And I was hoping that that would still be the case as now we have that 48 megapixel sensor on the 14 Pros using Pro Raw. But I think that now the cameras and the sensors are just getting too big to work with these lenses. They were just not designed to work with these newer phones. And just to say, I do only have a 14 Pro Max to test with, not the regular 14, which does have smaller cameras and sensors, so these lenses might not have the same issues as you see on the Pros. Comment below if you have one and you've tested it, and let me know. So let's take a look. This is Moment's wide lens mounted on the main camera, and as you can see, there's some very dark areas at the edges of the frame here. It's noticeable in both photos and videos. In some shots, it's more difficult to see, but if I show you against a plain white background, you can really see the dark edges here. I did manage to get some nice shots where it's not so visible, like this shot of the leaf on the grass. It's got a nice shallow depth of field from the main camera's big sensor, which you don't normally get on wide lenses. And this was shot at 48 megapixels in Pro Raw, and I think it looks so much better than the native ultra wide with that blur roll off and all that extra detail. But the vignetting is still there, it's just not as noticeable as when you're shooting with more of a solid colour in the shot, like the sky for example, which most of your shots are going to have, so I wouldn't recommend using the wide for your 14 Pro. Next up, let's look at the anamorphic lenses. These squeeze the image horizontally to fit a wider field of view into the shot and give you that really wide cinematic look to your footage once it's been de-squeezed, with the bonus of some pretty cool looking lens flares too. Moment has two versions, a more neutral and natural looking gold flare and a more sci-fi looking blue flare. But again, there's some very strong vignetting at the edges of the shot. I filmed these in the Filmic Pro app so I can have the videos de-squeezed as they're saved and I did turn off the video stabilization. But again, those dark edges are clearly visible in both videos and in photos. I've always loved the look of these lenses, especially with those flares, and I was really hoping that it would still work with the new 14 Pro. But those dark edges are very distracting and they are difficult to shoot with, you can't really get around it. 
unless you only mount it over the 3x camera, which has no vignetting. You could crop in and cut it out of the frame, but then you're going to lose out on image quality and no one really wants to do that. Here it is again against more of a plain background to show it more clearly. It's a lot stronger on the one side than the other. And again, I don't think you should shoot with it on the 14 Pro. Looking at the macro next, and this is one of the lenses that still works pretty flawlessly on the new iPhones. I love this lens for taking up close nature shots. Here's a shot comparing the moment macro mounted on the main camera versus the native macro mode with the iPhone's ultra wide camera. And you actually get a really nice shallow depth of field with the moment macro that really draws you into the image and gets rid of some of those distractions in the background that you have in the native macro mode. You can also use it to capture at a much higher resolution using the 48 megapixel sensor. Plus you can also mount the macro over the 3X camera to get even closer still, way closer than you can with the iPhone's macro mode. You can see every follicle, every droplet, but at this level of magnification, you definitely do need a steady hand or a tripod with that super shallow depth of field. There is actually some circular vignetting happening here, but because we're shooting so up close with lots going on in the frame, it's really not that noticeable at all in use. So this is one of the lenses that I'd say you can still use with an iPhone 14 Pro. And I do love taking these up close shots. You can turn these into some really cool looking lock screen wallpapers. It's a lot of fun to shoot with. Next is the 58mm telly. And with this lens, as it's optically zooming in on the main camera, there's no vignetting happening here. But instead, I have noticed sometimes there's a bit of like a glow or a soft edge around some of the things in the image and some softness in the corners. It's more visible in some shots than others. Sometimes you can get a really nice shallow depth of field and bokeh, and at other times it just looks a bit kind of weird and off, especially when you're cropping in or reframing an image, and it doesn't really work at all over the 3X camera. So this is a lens that I'd avoid using with the 14 Pro. And lastly, this is the Moment Fisheye. This lens has a super wide field of view, even wider than the Moment Wide and the built-in Ultra Wide. And I was kind of expecting this to have the worst vignetting of all the lenses, but surprisingly, there's no vignetting happening at all here. Both videos and stills look great with it. As it's a fisheye, you do get a lot of distortion happening. It kind of has that sort of GoPro or action camera look. And it's a great lens for just sticking on the back of your phone and using it if you wanted to use your phone for vlogging, for example. That's what I was trying to say in this clip, but I was up on a hill and it was incredibly windy when I shot it and you just couldn't really hear what I was saying. But with this lens, as it's just so wide, you can put it on the back of your phone, point your phone towards you and not have to worry about if you're even in the shot. You will be because it's just got such a wide field of view. This lens along with the macro are really the only lenses that still work pretty much fine with the 14 Pros. These lenses were of course designed to work on much older phones from five, six years ago. And as I mentioned in my previous videos about them, there will come a time when they just don't work with the latest phones. They're not always gonna be forwards compatible. And I think that time has sort of finally come. The fisheye and the macro are still very much usable and they're probably the only ones that I'm still gonna use. But with the vignetting and the soft edges on some of the others, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying those now for a 14 Pro. They're not totally unusable, but you're just not gonna get the best optical quality from them. And I have seen some other people reporting the same. Let me know in the comments if you've also been seeing some vignetting with these lenses on your 14 Pro. I really hope that Moment comes out with a series of bigger V3 lenses that can work with phones that have these bigger cameras and sensors because I do love shooting with them, especially with the anamorphics. But until then, there are some other companies also making mobile lenses for phones, so let me know if you want me to take a look at those on the channel. If you do have an older iPhone like a 10 or a 12, these lenses will still work great with them. I'll leave links in the description to my previous videos if you'd like to check them out. If this video helped you out, you can let me know by hitting the like button. And if you'd like to see more tech and tech accessory content from me, you can hit subscribe and the bell. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.